Canadian professional football. This portion brought to you by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for the best in television sports coverage across Canada every season. Over the head of the intended receiver, Bobby Taylor, in the end zone. And for the viewers in Eastern Canada who have just joined our telecast, we have 11 minutes and 22 seconds still to play in the first quarter. And all you folks out in Newfoundland who are also enjoying tonight's game from the far west coast, the Toronto Argonauts have been in possession since the opening kickoff. And with Dave Ramey and Bill Simons running, they have a second down and touchdown situation from the nine of the British Columbia Lions. Tom Wilkinson gets the touchdown. The Toronto Argonauts with Tom Wilkinson on that keeper. Move in front by a score of 6-0. And they use six plays to cover 84 yards. And Leo Cahill undoubtedly has to be pleased with the progress of his troops in the early moments of this football game. Coach Jim Champion obviously has told the BC Lions that they must contain Wilkinson on these rollouts. But he got outside. He started to go outside and came back up in the middle for the six points now. Dave Mann will try the convert. He's been good on 10 of 12 attempts this season. Record now stands at 11 of 13. There's a timeout at the four minute mark of the first quarter. The score is the Argonauts seven, the BC Lions nothing. Children are buzzing, shouting bundles of atomic energy. Little creatures who need to run and play. They drive grown-ups mad and get into all sorts of trouble. Then they make up for it by being children. They have an insatiable thirst for fun and learning. At CBC, we make programs especially for children. They're educational and fun. And that's what television is all about. Television. Dave Mann will kick it off with the Toronto Argonauts. Jake Scott and Leroy Sledge are deep, and Scott will take the kickoff. He's across the 25. A kickoff return by Jake Scott, tackled by Chuck Lebrock and Jim Tomlin. We see uh, Scott running the ball back here, and if he hadn't uh, fumbled or stumbled once or twice, Don, I think he might just have gone all the way. He wasn't quite sure a couple of times which way to turn. An 87-yard kickoff return by number one, 21, Jake Scott. You'll undoubtedly see him playing some defensive half tonight as well as his offensive halfback spot. The quarterback is Paul Brothers and the ball carrier is Jim Evenson. He's across the 20 to the 17 yard line. That's a gain of five. It will be second and five from the 17. It will be second down and five yards to go from the 17 for the BC Lions. Brothers, the quarterback, throwing complete to Jim Young in first down territory at the seventh. Ron Arends made the tackle on number 30, Jim Young. And when they played an exhibition game here at Empire Stadium in the month of July, Jim Young had a fantastic evening in catching the football for the BC Lions. He'd like to duplicate that feat tonight in a game that they're playing for keeps. Say that 
that touchdown has to be credited partially to Trevor Eckdahl, number 66, the left guard, and Mike St. Louis, the offensive left tackle, as they open up a gigantic hole for Sledge on a straight dive play. Sledge, of course, was the darling of BC fans in 1967. He had problems last year. He was cut from the team at one stage this season and was brought back because of an injury situation. Jim Champion undoubtedly is mighty pleased he made that move for tonight's ball game. And with Ted Gerrella adding the convert, the BC Lions and the Toronto Argonauts are all even at seven points apiece. And we have nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining to play in the first quarter. Well, of the scoring so early as any indication, Don, we could see a lot tonight. The Lions not known for a great amount of scoring in a game. They've averaged only 13 points this year. The Argonauts, the explosive team with 30, but... Boy, the way they're reeling off points in the early minutes tonight, this could go pretty high here at Empire Stadium. Dave Ramey standing between the goalposts, flanking him, Jim Tomlin, and Jim Thorpe. The kickoff return combination, three deep, as Ted Zarella prepares to kick off with the BC Lions. It's taken by Jim Thorpe. little fellow's a speedster. He's up to the 35. Jim Young came up to make the tackle. That was a 55-yard kickoff and a 20-yard return by number 20, Jim Thorpe. And the Toronto Argonauts have Paul Markle and Mel Prophet as the ends. Bob Hudspeth and Danny Nicolick are the tackles. Roger Scales and Charlie Bray the guards. Bob Swift is the center. Wilkinson has Bob Taylor, Bill Simons, Dave Ramey, and Jim Thorpe in his backfield. From the 35, it's first and 10 for the Toronto Argonauts. Wilkinson, 19, the quarterback. Simons, the ball carrier, crossing the 35, tackled by Dave Toby, the middle linebacker. The gain is held to one yard. It was a classic play done by Dave Toby, the middle linebacker, as the offensive guard pulled to lead the play. Dave to Toby shot up the hole that he'd vacated and caught the back from behind. It was about, uh, held him to about a one yard gain. Second and nine from the 36. Taylor and Thorpe flank left. Profit, the tight end, now splits. Thorpe has a first down at the 51, tackled by Dave Easley. Number 45, Dave Ray, was also over. Number 20 is Jim Thorpe. He has a storied name as far as football is concerned, and he's had quite a season thus far for the Toronto Argonauts. Tom Wilkinson showed a, a very strong arm on that play, Don. This is uh, possibly one of the reasons why Coach Leo Cahill has such, such confidence in him that he can trade away a star like Wally Gabler. Thorpe has gone to the bench. Mike Even has replaced him, and this is their student body movement as far as the backfield action is concerned. That's what... Coach Leo Cahill calls it anyway. Dave Ramey is across the midfield stripe, tackled by Ted Girella. Uh, Don, when uh, Coach Leo Cahill called that uh, motion where he has two people going across his formation, the student body, I wondered what he meant. Uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, it's an expression from college. When you get so many people out in front of the ball carrier, it looks like the whole student body's leading them. It's pretty good nomenclature, I guess moment last night we thought he was kidding he said seriously fellas I mean it second and five from the BC side of midfield Toronto Argonauts in possession and Ray is after Wilkinson and Wilkinson fired that ball downfield and out of bounds Dave Toby took a shot at him and a penalty marker is down. The infraction rough play against the British Columbia Lions. Jim Schmidt, the uh, young fellow that's starting his first game at right corner linebacker for the BC Lions, I think got a little over enthusiastic there, Don, and uh, hit Tom Wilkinson just after he'd thrown the football. Thus, the second roughing penalty of the game against the British Columbia Lions gives the, the Toronto Argonauts a first down inside the 40 of the Lions. Ramey is the ball carrier. Another penalty marker is down. Ramey's down to the 33, tackled by Bob Brown.
apparently it's offside against the Toronto Argonauts and undoubtedly the BC Lions will accept the penalty which means that referee Al Drago will move back to the original line of scrimmage and pace off five yards the first down will be repeated they'll have 15 yards to go from the 44 six minutes and 35 seconds remain to be played in quarter number one it's been an exciting ball game thus far the score is tied Toronto seven the BC Lions seven Bobby Taylor comes out to the left and Bill Simons has the football He was voted the outstanding player in the Canadian game last year. He can turn it on once he moves around that corner. Fortunately, Ted Girello was there, the last man as far as the Toronto Argonauts were concerned, and he brought him down. I think we should uh, pay special attention to big Charlie Bray, number 57, the right offensive guard of the Toronto Argonauts. He really moves out in front of those ball carriers, and he weighs 272 pounds. Second down and four, an advance of 11 by Simons. This time he's got the first down and he crosses the 25 to the 23. And Bob Brown, number 60, made the tackle. And number 33, Bill Simons. 76 is Paul Markle. 20 is Jim Thorpe. 66 is Bob Hudspeth. And you're looking at the Toronto huddle as Tom Wilkinson, the quarterback for the Argonauts, takes a look at the yardage situation and selects a play from this first and 10 at the 23. Ramey the ball carrier. He found the inside running a little tough that time. Number 51 Toby was there. 61 Heighton was also in on the stop. Number 52 Wayne Dennis and number 64 Garrett Hunsberger all had a hand in bringing down Dave Ramey. Now Jim Thorpe comes out for the Toronto Argonauts and Mike Eben goes into the ball game. Gain of four, it's second and six. The ball just inside the 20. 19 is the quarterback for Toronto, Tom Wilkinson. Intended for Bob Taylor, almost intercepted by Jerry Bradley. It goes as an incompleted pass. Now the Toronto Argonauts send in their field goal team and Dave Mann will try for three. He has just one field goal this season. Ten converts and five singles entering this ball game for 18 points. He's added a convert to that total tonight. Cosentino will again hold the field goal try from directly in front. And he'll hit it from the 27 yard line. It's good. We have a timeout. At the 12 minute mark of the first quarter, the score is the Argos 10, the BC Lions 7. I'm Tom McKee. When you want to enjoy the best in Canadian professional football, join the fun and excitement of the college game, watch the quick action on the soccer field, or mix with the crowds that follow hockey, indoor track, and wrestling. You can do it all right here on CBC Television. When you want to watch the thoroughbreds running, follow the standard breads as they pull the sulkies around the track. Feel the tension in the air over a championship putt. Or watch the exhausting action of competitive tennis. Here is where you'll find it on CBC Television. For the best in Major League Baseball action, golf, horse racing, hockey, soccer, college and professional football. Stay with CBC Television all season long. See the closing ceremonies from the Canada Games tomorrow on CBC Television. John Chevrier, you traveled to the West Coast with the Argonauts. Dave Mann, quite a sharp dresser in addition to being a Mighty sharp field goal and punter. Well, he's sharper now. We'll get back to Dave in a moment, Don. From the 35, it's first and 10 for the BC Lions. Evenson, the ball carrier. He has a gain of about three yards. Hey, 
The BC Lions have Lefty Hendrickson and Ted Workington at the end spot. Mike St. Louis and Max Huber are the tackles. Trevor Ekdahl and Ken Sugarman the guards, and Bob Howes is the center. Paul Brothers, the quarterback. He has Jim Young and Jake Scott, Leroy Sledge, and Evenson in the backfield with him. He'd like to have them there right now to do some blocking as Dick Aldridge came through to bury him back at the 30-yard line. The BC Lions that time put great pressure on, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Toronto Argonauts put great pressure on uh, Bruce Brothers, the Paul Brothers, sorry, of the BC Lions, and they did it by firing two of their linebackers. Huh? Ken Phillips will do the punting for the BC Lions. He stands back on the 19 yard line. A left footed kicker and he hung that one up there. Taken by Even and he stopped at the 30 but a penalty marker is down back at the line of scrimmage. Even number 32. Six foot two 188 pounds. 45 yard punt and the two yard return. Illegal interference against the Toronto Argonauts. BC Lions will have a first down from the 28. Well, Don Chevrier, what about that word on Dave Mann now? Well, apart from his uh, great style of dress, which uh, we remarked on, Don, the he had trouble at the beginning of the season with field goals. In fact, the only one he had before tonight was from 20 yards away. It was like a golf swing, at least my golf swing. He wasn't keeping his head down. Once he mastered that, he's hitting them again, and that 27 he hit was the longest this year for man. First and 10 for the BC Lions from the 28. The result of that penalty. Brothers has some running room. He has a first down, tackled by Marv Luster, number 27. Much to the delight of a capacity crowd at Empire Stadium this evening. A 14-yard gallop by number 10, Paul Brothers. Certainly excellent protection by the offensive line of the uh, British Columbia Lions. Don. It's something that they've done reasonably well all year. But Paul Brothers can now take advantage of it, as he did on that play, and gained, as you mentioned, 14 yards. From the 42, it's first and 10. Leroy Sledge is the ball carrier. It would appear that Mr. Sledge wants to become a regular employee once again of the VC Lions from his early performance in this ball game, tackled by Vernon Benoit. A gain of seven, make it second and three for the Lions from their own 49. Scott comes wide to the right. Penalty marker is down. Evenson, the ball carrier, is very close to the first down. He's number 28. Tackled by number 70, Mike Bloom. Don, if the defensive lineup of the Toronto Argonauts appeared somewhat funny to the fans on that play, it certainly was. There was only three defensive linemen down in the three-point stance, but they had six linebackers up within four yards of the line of scrimmage to try and stop that first down attempt. There was something funny on the part of the BC Lions, too, in the eyes of referee Paul Dojak. The offside penalty results in a second and seven play intercepted by Dick Thornton. He could go all the way. And a high sign from Thornton as he crosses into the end zone, holding the ball. He robs in for six points on that pass interception. He now has five interception returns for touchdowns. Dick Thornton, of course, the former Winnipeg Blue Bomber and teammate of, my, uh, of myself, uh, did an excellent job on that play. He was covering Jim Young, who came down about 15 yards and tried to break out. And Dick was on man-to-man -man coverage on him, stepped in front of him, took the ball to a 45-yard re return for a touchdown. Dave Mann will attempt the extra points. It's a 16 to 7 ball game. And it's now 17 7 with one minute and 17 seconds remaining. 
Well, unfortunately, I've just been informed that uh, many fans across the country did not see that interception by Dick Thornton. The network is experiencing picture difficulty. We thought it was simply our monitors that had conked out here at Empire Stadium. We regret that that interception returned by Dick Thornton did not come into your living room or wherever you may be watching tonight's football telecast from. Dave Mann kicking off for the Toronto Argonauts with a minute and 17 seconds remaining. Jake Scott is going to run it back. He rambled 87 yards the last time he had it. He's still on his feet. And finally is brought down at the 38 by Jim Henderson. Well, the fellow who was uh, second in interceptions in United States college football and led the whole nation in punt returns last year, Jake Scott, can certainly run with that football as he's shown us twice now this evening on kickoff returns. Trailing by 10, the BC Lions now have a first and 10 set up from their own 38. Jake Scott goes wide to the left. The pitch is to Evenson, and he's caught by Pete Martin, the right corner linebacker. So as we are still experiencing picture difficulty from Empire Stadium, it's a pickup of two, and it's second and eight for the British Columbia Lions. The ball at their own 40. And now coming into the ball game is Bill Lassiter for the Lions. And we are informed that uh, everything, again, is functioning properly. At least we hope it is along the network. Too long in the huddle has just been charged against the British Columbia Lions. So that will make it second and 13. The ball now back to the 35. The original line of scrimmage following the kickoff was the 38. Ted Warkinson goes wide to the left. Brothers throws incomplete. It was intended for lefty Hendrickson. Alan Ray Aldridge was in applying tremendous pressure on quarterback Paul Brothers. Listen, Paul Brothers is, is going to try to uh, work against this Toronto defense, which plays primarily a man-to-man -man pass coverage defense, Don. And he's trying to get two or three people working against individuals on the wide side of the field. But that time, as you say, Alan Ray Aldridge put too great a pressure on him for, to, for him to have time to throw the ball. Even and Sternberg are back as the punt return there with time running out in this first quarter. Ken Phillips caught another pretty good one. It's taken and fumbled by Even. He managed to recover in time and then is dropped as he dove to the 33. At the end of the first quarter, the score is the Argonauts 17, the BC Lions 7, and we'll have more CFL action after this message. This is George Brown. Evening, Mrs. Green. He's not feeling so hot. You see, he's got arthritis, and he's not handling it too well. Sometimes it's annoying. A rest. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Fumble! Daddy! And it's painful. Oh, that dirty... What it's all for? I don't know. George was in the dark about arthritis for quite a while, until he got the facts from his doctor. It's amazing how many people don't know what can be done. There are more than one million Canadians like George. Some not so bad, some worse. The Canadian Arthritis and Rheumatism Society exists to help them and their doctors. If you'd like to help us, here's our address. Or if you need the facts about arthritis, we can help you. Same address. Back at Empire Stadium in Vancouver for the start of quarter number two, I'm Don Whitman along with Frank Rigney and Don Chevrier bringing you tonight's CFL telecast as the Toronto Argonauts lead the British Columbia Lions 
17-7. A wide open first quarter with 24 points being scored. Toronto Argonauts getting one of them on an interception by Dick Thornton. Tom Wilkinson scored the first touchdown on a keeper play from 14 yards out. Dave Matt added the convert, but the Lions came right back with a touchdown by Leroy Sledge. And the convert by Girello made it a seven all ball game. Then Dave Mann made it 10 to seven and Dick Thornton added the 16th point and Dave Mann made it 17 seven. That's the way things stand as we start quarter number two with Wilkinson attempting to pass. He's complete to Dave Ramey look out. Dancing down the sidelines, he's forced out at the 32 of the BC Lions. What a ball game, number 14, Dave Ramey is having. That's about the third or fourth time Dave Ramey's shown why he's such a, a, a great star in this league, Don. Uh, Mel Prophet there, the tight end, number 75, makes a great block for him and allows him to go an additional 15 yards on that reception. First and ten from the 32. I remind you at halftime, the most interesting interview Frank Rigney conducted yesterday with Dave Ramey. The pitch to Ramey. He's stopped as he crosses the 30 at the 28 by Dave Toby. Ramey, of course, during his years with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, wore sweater number 27, and as pointed out at the start of tonight's telecast, Marv Lester wasn't about to give up that numeral with the Toronto Argonauts, so Ramey is wearing 14. Number 32, Mike Eben comes into the ball game, and Jim Thorpe, number 20, goes to the bench to confer with Leo Cahill. Second and five for Toronto. Complete to Bill Simons. determined to crack into that end zone. He was stopped about four yards short by Dave Easley. This Toronto Football Club uses a, a variety of offensive formations, Don. They lined up strong left or flex left that time with three quick receivers on that side. But they came back and hit Bill Simons on the short side coming over the middle for a 22-yard gain, a fine reception. Number 20, Jim Thorpe just streaking into the huddle, replacing Mike Even. Undoubtedly with a word from coach Leo Cahill to quarterback Tom Wilkinson. From the four yard line it's first and touchdown to go. That student body movement is in effect again and Dave Ramey has the football. He also has a touchdown. Again we see Charlie Bray the offensive right guard number 57 leading Dave Ramey around the right side. A 76 yard uh, offensive thrust by the Toronto Argonauts in four plays. Watch Dave sweeping to the right. Charlie Bray, number 57, right there, leads him into the end zone. Good block by Bray, run by Ramey as the Argonauts use just four plays to cover 76 yards. Now Dave Mann will attempt the extra point. It's 23 7 now. Cosentino, number 11, will hold. It is good. There's a timeout at the two minute mark of the second quarter. The score is the Argos 24, the BC Lions 7. Hello. Well, here we are at the beginning of another football season. I'm Lloyd Leeming, and as president of Labatt's Ontario Breweries, I'd like to say how pleased we are to be associated with Canadian professional football once again. Both Canadian professional football and Labatt's have come a long way together over the years. While Labatt's is involved in many areas of sport, Canadian professional football holds a very special place for us, and we think for all Canadians. With its unique rules, many see it as the most Canadian of all our professional sports, making its own special contribution to the Canadian scene. Because Labatt's is a growing Canadian company whose products are sold and enjoyed across Canada, we are certainly interested in helping to further the Canadian scene. We hope you'll continue to enjoy our products and these CFL telecasts. To which, by the way, we'd better return. You see, I like the game too.
Dave Mann will kick it off early in this second quarter to Leroy Sledge and Jake Scott standing back on the two yard line. Sledge will run the kick back. BC Lions will scrimmage the ball first and 10 from the 35. A 60 yard kick and a 30 yard return. Roger Scales making the tackle for the Toronto Argonauts. Number 27, Leroy Sledge. If you've been wondering about the performance of Dave Ramey tonight, he's carried the ball six times for 44 yards and he's caught two passes for 63 more. So 107 yards offense for Ramey thus far in the ball game. Brothers through attempting to hit Jim Young number 30 incomplete. You know Don the Lions have had a rough schedule. They've faced all the top teams in the country Hamilton Ottawa on their eastern swing Calgary and Saskatchewan in the west and now suddenly the Toronto team which has Dave Ramey as a first nighter that's a pretty tough way to start five first games of the year. Jim Champion said if Denny Beach voted for the schedule we have this year it had to be unanimous because almost certainly the other general managers would vote for it. Paul Brothers is buried back at the 28. That was Mike Wadsworth number 59 the first man to pounce on him. Mike Wadsworth, of course, does a great job here in uh, rushing the passer. Brothers actually had a, uh, a little time. Let's watch him, number 59. He gets away from Bob Halsey, BC center, and gets Paul Brothers for that loss. Third and 14, and Ken Phillips is kicking. He's a left-footed kicker. Even takes it at the 35. Crosses the 45 to the 46, tackled there by Bill Lassiter. We saw an example there, Don, of uh, their new rule change and how it affects punt re returning, but we'll get back to that in just a moment. The penalty marker is down back at the line of scrimmage, so Frank, continue, if you will. Well, as uh, we mentioned in earlier telecast, Don, only the two men on the end of the line of scrimmage can uh, go down under the punt to cover it prior to the ball actually being kicked. Consequently, the receiver has quite a bit more time to get started in any event to run that, those punts back. In that case, it was a 47-yard punt, and we had a 10-yard return. The legal procedure was the charge against the B.C. Lions, declined by the Toronto Argonauts. With 11.47 remaining in quarter number two, and the Argonauts leading 24-7, they'll scrimmage the ball first and 10 from between the 46 and 47-yard stripes. Their offense has really been explosive under the direction of Tom Wilkinson. Pass to Simons and he's caught on a good defensive play by Bob Brown. This Toronto football team has to be one of the most difficult in Canada to uh, defend against Don and I'm sure BC, uh, BC coach Jim Champion knows that at this stage we have just a tremendous variety of offensive sets and can get the ball to almost anybody they want to from each one of them. I think that coach Leo Cahill is helping quarterback Tom Wilkinson as he has been shuffling Jim Thorpe and Mike Even. Even is now in there and Ramey is the ball carrier. He's up to the 53 yard line short of the first down by about three and a half yards. One thing that's amazing, too, with as complicated an offense as Toronto appears to have, Dave Ramey, after only four practices, uh, seems to have fitted right in and learned the, the whole uh, myriad of plays that they do have done. Dave Mann is kicking. And I believe that's his first punt. He got a good one. Dave Easley is stopped at the nine yard line a 58 yard punt by Dave Mann and for number 20 Dave Easley a seven yard return Mann, of course holds the record for the longest punt in the Canadian Football League 102 yards against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 1966. 
This year, he has a 47.9 yard punting average. So from the nine, it's first and ten for the BC Lions. Leroy Sledge fumbles the football. I think Jim Evenson may have recovered, or did he? No, the Toronto Argonauts have got it. Ed Harrington popped it loose. Jim Evenson dove on it, but apparently it squirted away from him, and the Toronto Argonauts take over first and ten from the 14. Incomplete, a penalty marker is down. Easley was defending against Bobby Taylor. Taylor was right at the goal line. I don't think there can be any question uh, about the call on that play. Dave Easley, number 20, grabbed uh, little Bobby Taylor, number 24, the Toronto Argonaut flanker, as he came down and broke over the center of the defensive uh, backfield for BC and I'm sure it would have been six points in any event so it was actually a good play by Dave Easley. Half the distance to the goal line gives Toronto first and goal to go from the seventh. Wilkinson number 19 the Toronto quarterback. Thorpe and Taylor are the two backs in motion. Simons, the ball carrier, is upended at the five. Let's watch Mel Profit here as he blocks for this play. But the real key to this play is Ted Jarella as he does a fine job coming up and stopping the ball carrier, as we saw before the ball game in the highlights. He can stop them. Second and touchdown from the five. Wilkinson is caught. A good move by Garrett Huntsberger. His rookie defensive end for the BC Lions has played some sound football this year. There was excellent pass protection or uh, pass coverage there by Jim Schmidt, the fellow starting, as we mentioned earlier, for the first time at right outside linebacker as he covered the flanker Bobby Taylor man for man. And uh, just simply didn't have enough time to get that football away. So with a third down play, 15 yards to go coming up, Dave Mann will try for three points from 23 yards up. It's wide, and in the end zone, Jerry Bradley concedes the single point. So with eight minutes and 25 seconds now remaining in quarter number two, it's Toronto 25 and the British Columbia Lions seven. Now the more our viewers can see coverage of the Canada games from Halifax, a 90 minute color telecast including track and field, canoeing, lacrosse, water polo, cycling and softball. Then right after, the colorful closing ceremonies of the 1969 Canada games, all on CBC television tomorrow Sunday. With that single point, the BC Lions put the football into play from their own 25, first and 10. Jim Evenson was caught at the 28. Marv Lester came up from his defensive half spot to make the tackle. Vernon Vinoy and Ed Harrington, when they go into that three man front, are playing the defensive end spot. Mike Wadsworth is in the middle. Mike Bloom, Dick Aldridge, Alan Ray Aldridge, and Pete Martin are the linebackers. Dick Thornton, Ed Learn, Marv Luster, Ron Aranz, and Jim Tomlin are the defensive backs. Second and seven. Brothers is caught for a loss back to the 23. Pete Martin came through and made the tackle. And it will be third down for the BC Lions, 12 yards to go. 
quarterback Paul Brothers has to be wondering where they're coming from. Even Marvin Luster, the defensive safety, number 27, came on that play. So they blitzed seven people, and Brothers had no chance at all to get rid of that football. Phillips is kicking for the BC Lions. Left footed Hoover, he gets it away to Mike Even. Even is still struggling, but the whistle went with Bill Lassiter making the tackle back at the 45 yard line. Lynn Hendrickson was also downfield. Number 32, Mike Even had an eight yard return on that 48 yard punt. 25 7, the Toronto Argonauts lead the British Columbia Lions. It's first and ten for the Toronto Argonauts from the 45. We'll be on hand in Edmonton on Wednesday night for the telecast of the Argonaut game with the Eskimos. Almost intercepted on the far side of the field by Jerry Bradley. Not a particularly well-thrown ball on the part of Tom Wilkinson. It certainly wasn't. Uh, I don't know what happened there, Don. It appeared that uh, possibly he was rolling to his left and just didn't have a firm grip on the ball, but he certainly didn't throw it with any authority at all. Pressure was being applied to the Toronto quarterback from defensive tackle Wayne Dennis. Mike Even again goes into the lineup and Jim Thorpe goes to the Toronto bench. Second and 10 from the 45. The penalty marker is down and down at the 40 is quarterback Wilkinson caught by Garrett Huntsberger. Jim Heighton, number 61, another newcomer to this British Columbia team, also in on the tackle. Holding charged against the Toronto Argonauts, and with that successful defensive maneuver by the Lions, they, of course, declined the penalty. I believe that call was on Danny Nicklaus, number 60, Don, and he's one of the old pros of the CFL, being in his 14th season with the Toronto Argonauts. Dave Mann will be kicking to Bill Lassiter and Dave Easley. Taken by Lassiter. The BC Lions will scrimmage first and ten from their own 25. Paul Markle is downfield along with Mel Prophet making the tackle, holding the return by number 34 Lassiter to five yards after a 49 yard punt by Dave Mann. One of the ways the BC Lions offensive team is trying to combat the uh, variety of Toronto defenses is to spread their offensive line. Let's see if it does any good. Leroy Sledge picks up about nine yards, fighting to the 35, tackled by Marv Luster. And there appears to be an injured Toronto Argonaut. Pete Martin is a little slow in getting to his feet. In fact, he's still down in one knee. While they attend to Martin, Don, uh, you mentioned earlier how hungry Leroy Hedges or Le Leroy Sledge is to make a spot here with the BC Lions. Should he fail, of course, politics are always open to ex-Lion football players. They've got Herb Capozzi, the former GM, Anna Stukas, the former coach, and Emory Barnes, the former lineman, all running next Wednesday in BC's general election. Martin looks all right. He's escorted off the field by trainer Stan Wilson. He was born in all places of Red Wing, Minnesota. I wonder if he's a hockey fan, Frank. <laughs> certainly has to be from that area, Don. Tom Wilkinson, the Toronto quarterback, was born in Grade Bull, Wyoming. Jim Evenson has the first down up to the 38-yard line. Balasuk has replaced Martin in the defensive alignment for the Toronto Argonauts. Leroy Sledge this time is going nowhere. Ed Harrington 
just now getting up from making that tackle really closed the hole. And apparently Pete Martin is all right. He's back into the ball game at his corner linebacking spot. Second and 11 for the BC Lions from the 37. Brothers was caught from behind by the same Mr. Harrington. He's a fine physical specimen. He works out on the weights almost daily. He's got muscles on top of muscles. He's 6'3", 245 pounds, and has been an outstanding defensive end for these Toronto Argonauts. It's third down and about two yards to go, and apparently the British Columbia Lions are going to gamble. Four minutes and 19 seconds remain to be played in the second quarter. They trail 25-7. This could be an extremely important play. Leroy Sled dives to the 50 for the first down. Just a great block again by Mike St. Louis who opened that hole for Leroy Sledge to score BC's only touchdown of this football game. He opened it again and they got a very crucial first down on that play, Don. From the 50, it's first and 10 for the Lions. Jake Scott and Jim Young in the backfield, along with Jim Evenson and Leroy Sledge. The quarterback is Paul Brothers. The ends are Lefty Hendrickson and Ted Workinson. Brothers attempted to dodge a couple, but he couldn't avoid all those blue and white uniforms. Alan Ray Aldridge was there to make the tackle. One advantage the Toronto Football Club has, of course, is three former All-Canadians and five Eastern Conference All-Stars on that ball club. And they can play man-to-man -man coverage, they feel, against any football club in Canada and consequently fire six or seven people in on that passer as they did that time. Second and 15. Draw play to Jim Evenson. He's short of the first down, but he advances the football to the 53 of the Toronto Argonauts, tackled by Alan Ray Aldridge. Evenson, number 28, was the second leading rusher in the Western Conference last year, finishing just two yards behind the rushing champion, George Ray. There's a stoppage in play. At the 12-minute mark of the second quarter, the score is the Argos 25, the BC Lions 7. When you're smiling, say the bat's blue, the beer that smiles with you. It's the true one, good for you one, the lager that's true blue. Next time you order, next time just say the bat's blue. blue. It's the lager, lager tastes that is true. So when you're smiling, say the bat's blue, the true blue lager beer. Twenty-five seven, the Toronto Argonauts lead the British Columbia Lions. Another rather critical third down play for the Lions. They have the football at the fifty-two of the Argonauts. It's third and about two, and again they're gambling. The pass complete to Jim Evenson. He has a big first down with Ed Learn making the tackle just inside the 25. Frank, that was quite a gamble. It certainly was, and a great call by Paul Brothers after two Excessive times of attempting to go for that short yardage play. Watch Jim Evenson make this reception. Tomlin finally catches him after a substantial gain down to the 22 yard line. 28 yard gain. First and 10 for the Lions. 
straight ahead play to Jim Evenson. Don, I wonder if all that talk about signing Leroy Keyes of Purdue here is making Jim run just a little bit harder tonight. Well, there has been considerable speculation here on the West Coast about the possibility of the Purdue star joining the British Columbia Lions. Rumors that he would be offered a contract in the neighborhood of $175,000, which would include shares in uh, various stocks. Just off the fingertips of Jim Young in the end zone. At second and sixth play, Ron Arenz was defending against number 30, Jim Young. And he very nearly came up with the six points. Certainly, if you're going to throw against this Toronto deep backfield, Ron Arenz, who's the youngest of the defenders back there, and of course the most unproven at this stage, is the one that you try to throw against. And certainly, with a receiver like Jim Young, you should have some degree of chance of success. But they didn't happen that time. Twice the uh, Lions have gambled successfully on third down and two. This time they're gambling on third and six. The ball at the 20 of the beast of the Toronto Argonauts. The pass complete to Jim Young. Touchdown, but a penalty marker is down. Hold it. A penalty marker is down. Against the Toronto Argonauts, of course, declined by the British Columbia Lions. So the touchdown play on another critical third down gamble is good for six points. And the Lions marched 85 yards on nine plays. And three times, Frank, on third down situations, they refused to give up the football. Brothers seem to have found an area in that Argo defense to hit that outside flat. He hit Evanson one time and then Young this time for the touchdown. And with Ted Girella adding the convert, it's now 25-14. The Toronto Argonauts leading the British Columbia Lions. And both teams have put together some rather sustained drives. The Argonauts in the first quarter and the BC Lions here in the second quarter. Dave Ramey, of course, has been one of the offensive stars for the, uh, the Toronto Argonauts. In the first 30 minutes of this ball game, and during our halftime intermission, we invite you to stay with us for a most interesting interview Frank Rickney conducted with Ramey yesterday following the Argonaut practice session. Coach Jim Champion and the BC Lions must be uh, have a great deal of encouragement from that, Don. After his ball club is down uh, 18 points, they come marching back on an 85-yard drive to, to regain uh, getting back in this ball game. Jim Thorpe takes the kick up. Thorpe has dropped at the 30 yard line with a minute and 44 seconds remaining in quarter number two by Mike St. Louis. Jim Thorpe by the way you might find it interesting or the fans might find it interesting that this young boy has lost 11 teeth since the training cap opened in 1969. At that time, he didn't lose any. He returned that 56-yard kickoff, 22 yards. Having lost 11, I doubt if he has too many more he can afford to give up. Speaking of teeth, Dave Ramey had a rough session against the Edmonton Eskimos in the opening game of the year in which he wore a Winnipeg Blue Bomber uniform. He was hit on a jarring tackle. And he uh, required some dental work after that particular game. However, it did not keep him out of the lineup. As he was back for the second game of the season, which Winnipeg beat Edmonton in Edmonton. A good catch by Mel Prophet. This big tight end came up with a fine reception in a crowd. And he was caught by Craig Murray. And you see the hair uh, hanging out from under number 75's helmet. He has a long hairdo. He sports a handlebar mustache. And he also owns a boutique in Toronto. He also does some writing. He's done some traveling. And I understand he'd like to do some broadcasting. He's a rather versatile individual. Dave Ramey on a dropway. He 
got one good block. And then he's finally caught on the far side of the field. The ball is fumbled. Who's got it? And now there's a mix-up on the far side of the field. That took place right at the BC Lion bench, and uh, what a struggle is going on over there. This is uh, something of an ugly incident as players are swinging, and they're in that crowd. Our squatter, Mo Simovich, has the glasses trained on that area. One thing, Don, that I've always learned in, in a situation like that, and all ball players should learn, is keep that helmet on in the crowd. <laughs> Whatever transpired took place right at the end of the British Columbia Lions bench. Both of these teams, of course, have a reputation for being rather aggressive, or at least having a number of individuals on their ball club that are aggressive, and they sure showed signs of it at that stage. Some of them don't exactly confine their aggressiveness to the playing field either, as there have been incidents of uh, rather high living on the park in the past with some members of the D.C. Lions. But one thing, the commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Jake Gadar, is in attendance at tonight's ball game. He'll be getting the report from referee Al Bravo, but he also has had a first-hand look at what has taken place. 45 seconds remain to be played. The ball in possession of the British Columbia Lions. We're attempting to determine which players, if any, have been ejected from the football game. In the condition of his uniform, uh, number 20, Jim Thorpe, certainly looks like he was involved in some way. It appears that Dave Ramey, I, I, I think, in any event, Dave Ramey tried to lateral the ball to Jim Thorpe, but it was fumbled in the exchange. Bill Simons may also be out of this ball game. We'll attempt to get word to you just as quickly as possible from the sideline. The penalty 25 yards down to the 15. A rough play, fighting infraction, charged apparently against the Toronto Argonauts. As yet, we have had no signal from the field as to whether any members of the BC Lions have been ejected from the ball game. Just 45 seconds remain to be played at any rate in this second quarter. We've had a little of everything tonight. Some technical difficulties with our network. Players ejected. Some wide open play. Jim Thorpe is out of the ball game, definitely. And as yet, we have not determined whether there have been any further penalties of that nature. Of course, that was a fumble by the Toronto Argonauts. The BC Lions recovered, and it's a first down at the 15. They trail 25-14. 45 seconds remain to be played. This is the reverse. The ball to Jim Young. Young is tackled down at about the seven-yard line. Mike Bloom made the stop. Apparently, that is the only ejection. Jim Thorpe out of the ballgame for fighting for the Toronto Argonauts. Young attempted to come back. He was met head-on and driven back, and feelings, as you can see, are running rather high. They were up until the moment that Jim Thorpe, number 20, got involved in that scrap on the far side and was tossed out. And undoubtedly, they'll continue, although I'm sure the officials are quite pleased that they'll have that cooling off period as they're just 13 seconds away from the halftime intermission. Well, this is a third down gamble by the Lions. There's the pass, incomplete, intended for Jake Scott. With just four seconds showing on the clock, the BC Lions failed to capitalize on the opportunity afforded them, the fumble and the penalty, moving the ball down to the 15. Of course, quarterback Paul Brothers is holding his head in disgust with himself. He had all the time in the world, and 
just threw that ball a little bit too quickly and didn't quite get it high enough to score that six points. Thus, with four seconds remaining, the Toronto Argonauts take over. This will undoubtedly be the final play of the first half. Wilkinson keeps. There's the gun. And at the end of the first half, the score is the Argonauts 25, the BC Lions 14. We'll be back with our halftime show after this message. Bats 50 and the great outdoors go so well together. There's nothing wets an appetite like clean, fresh air and a nice cold 50. Enjoy yourself at 50 to the fun. Enjoy yourself. Take 50 and you'll love it. Take 50 and you'll love it. football game a lot of offensive plays and some rough stuff too as we saw late in that second quarter the Argonauts have the lead over the Lions but the BC team with a lot of fights show they might come back in the second half they certainly have to have a win here before the home crowd an almost capacity crowd at Empire Stadium one of the biggest CFL trades in years was finalized this past week Dave Ramey went east of the Argonauts and Wally Gaber went west to quarterback the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Ramey as we saw in the first half has plenty of backfield speed for the Argonauts. His former teammate Frank Rigney interviewed Dave Ramey. In 1965, Dave, our first year as teammates, uh, we had a, a reasonably good football club with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and you seemed uh, reasonably pleased with it. Is there any particular reason in the last few years that you uh, feel that uh, you didn't enjoy playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? Well, Frank, you uh, know yourself, being an old pro, that in order to have a pretty organized team, you have to have a mixture of old and new. I mean, the, the, the best situations have all old pros, but uh, a situation that's uh, good also is to have a mixture of old pros and then new guys where you can help the guys along. The last couple of years at Winnipeg, we've had so many changes, so many new guys, it's been sort of very disorganized, you know, as far as uh, us organizing what we're going to do as far as winning games. You felt in the club lacked some stability, Dave. Uh, uh, do you feel that the attitude generally among the ball players was one of happiness or they were uh, discontented with the ball club generally or do you have an opinion in that area? I, I, I don't say discontentment or, or really unhappiness. I think the fact that just like I said in, as far as your, your first question, the, the fact that with so many new guys and so much happening as far as changes and therefore it resulted in disorganization and therefore this caused discontentment I believe among all the ball players and a mistrust for the things that we were trying to do on the field as Dave you were uh, quoted and uh, I'm sure that uh, some of it was quoted over quoted or possibly even misquoted uh, one of the things that was quoted out here in the Vancouver papers was that you felt that you were misused offensively uh, what did you mean by that well Frank uh, in the last two or three years the only way that it seemed to me as though Winnipeg was trying to utilize me was on the sweep and when we tried to run the sweep I knew it was coming and and and, and the, I, I would hear the guys on the defense say here comes Ramey you know I don't know whether I tipped it off or not but everybody in the park knew the sweep was coming and so it was it made it difficult for the blockers to, to get their block when everybody knew the sweep was coming I, I felt that I should have been utilized as far as on a quick short pass where I could get a pass quick and do a turn around and have some running room to go I mean this this is what I was talking about yes it's certainly understandable any way to get you the ball certainly was uh, would be uh, helpful offensively uh, Dave did you ask to be traded by the uh, to, uh, from the ball club or did you ask to be traded to a specific ball club well I asked to be traded from the ball club hoping to be traded to a specific ball club yes 
Uh, would you care to name that specific ball club, or was it the Toronto Argonauts? It was the Toronto Argonauts. I was hoping that I would get traded there. I watched them play, and I, I figured that this is the kind of ball club I wanted to be on. Uh, they have a lot of what, 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 what guys that are called Pex bad boys, which they call me in Winnipeg for some reason. And so we've, I felt that this is a ball club for me because all these guys seem very happy under, under Co Coach Cahill. Yes, it seems that Coach Cahill has put together a, a number of people, as you say, that were dissatisfied with their previous ball clubs. Is there any particular reason, do you think, that Coach Cahill has been able to uh, mold a fine football team from these people? I don't know. He seems to show a lot of respect for the ball players and their ideas. I've heard it's the few days that I've been here, I heard a few players suggest things that we try on the field, and he's uh, considered their suggestions, and in some, some instances, he's even used them. And I think this is great because we are pros and we know what we're doing and we're out there doing it. And it, they all seem seem to, to enjoy this. I mean, they, they, the, the ball players appreciate this. Even if their ideas aren't used, they appreciate that they're considered. Uh, Dave, have you had a, a chance yet? I know you've only had a chance for about four or five practices to learn uh, sufficient about the Argonite offense to contribute significantly in this BC game. I think so. I think I'm ready. Uh, their offense is not that complicated. Uh, it's new. It's new for me, without a doubt. But I think I'm ready. I've, I'm, I've been working quite hard since I've been in Toronto, and I'm ready to play football game tonight or tomorrow night. Well, certainly no one's going to question your ability to do just that, Dave. And I'd like to wish you luck as your first game uh, for the Toronto Argonauts against the BC Lions. Uh, best of luck and good luck in the future as well. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks, Dave. New Argo halfback Dave Ramey, and I'm sure Argonaut fans, having seen the first half, will agree they're going to like this guy, number 14, a man who came east in the trade for Wally Gabler. The score at halftime is the Argonauts 25 and the BC Lions 14, and we'll continue with our halftime show after this. from Labatt's, the longest, coolest, most enjoyable refreshment that ever bent your elbow. No wonder Labatt's 50 is Canada's one and only enjoyment aid. Enjoy yourself. Take five for 50 ale. Enjoy yourself. Three five for 50 ale. Labatt's has food. Drink 50 just for you. Professional football brought to you by Labatt's Brewers of 50 Ale, Canada's fastest growing ale, and Labatt's Blue, the true blue lager beer. The best in Canadian football from the best in Canadian beer. This is the CBC Television Network. Professional football. This portion brought to you by Canadian Pacific. Serving you in so many ways. Don Chevrier back at Empire Stadium. Halftime 25 14 the score in favor of the Argonauts. And some facts up here that pertain to play in the first half. The Argonauts, normally a team that'll throw 60 or 70 percent of the time, had a better balance between rushing and passing in this game. Their first down's 12 against 6 for BC. They rushed for 100 yards. They passed for 113. The Lions 61 yards along the ground and 57 passing. But that better balance on running and passing likely accountable because of Dave Ramey's presence in the lineup tonight. Ramey took the first few sweeps and led the Argonauts down for their first TD, as we'll see in the highlights later on. Only seven of 12, the completions for Wilkinson, that's a high percentage, but you see by only 12 attempts, the Argonauts not throwing as much. The Lions staying on the ground pretty much too. Paul Brothers good on three of eight pass attempts. A one interception for the touchdown, of course, by Dick Thornton covering 45 yards. 
In putting, they're about even. Dave Mann, 48 for the Argonauts, and Ken Phillips for the BC Lions, 46 and three attempts. The penalties, the game got a little rough later on in that half. 30 yards against Toronto, Jim Thorpe tossed out, and 40 yards in penalties against the British Columbia Lions. Dave Ramey individually had a big first half. Ramey rushed for 55 yards and eight carries. He caught two passes for 63 as the Argonauts have the halftime lead. The score, Toronto 25 and the BC Lions 14. And we'll continue with our halftime show after this message. When we say that you get good service at a CP hotel, we mean good service. service wherever you go, whether you stay at the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City, the Palliser in Calgary, the Saskatchewan in Regina, the Empress in Victoria, or at any of the other fine CP hotels across the country. CP Hotels, another way Canadian Pacific serves you. Frank Rigney, even though we uh, lost the picture for a little while, I'm sure the fans realize that we've had a lot of scoring in this game, and you must have had a difficult job picking out the highlights to show. Certainly did, Don, and there's quite a few highlights, which we're going to see in just a moment, and uh, quite a few different people participating in them, including, of course, Dave Ramey. Yes, Ramey got it off to a fast start. He swept twice from inside the 25, got the Argonauts downfield, where Tom Wilkinson finally capped their first scoring drive of tonight's football game. And right off the start, with Ramey in there, you knew the Argonauts were going to be a tough team to handle. Here's Wilkinson scoring that first touchdown you referred to, Don, uh, a 14-yard scamper as he cut back and went up the middle of the defensive uh, BC Lions. Now we see BC returning a kickoff. Jake Scott, their flanker, an outstanding college football player last year in the United States, and he returns this for 87 yards down to the 22-yard line and this leads up to the British Columbia's first touchdown uh, of this ball game. Here we see that touchdown scored by Leroy Sledge on a six yard plunge behind big Mike Lewis, number 67. And here we see the fellow we've been referring to all evening, uh, Dave Ramey, on one of the exciting plays that he gave us during the first half, this one being a pass reception as he catches it out in the flat and goes for about 37 yards on this play. Here we see Dave getting his first touchdown as a Toronto Argonaut on a four yard run. And of course, the Toronto Argonaut fans are looking for many more from him. By the way, on the play that led down to this point, the five yard line, Ramey threw a fantastic block for Bill Simons. He can block as well. Yes, he can do it all. No question about that, Don. And one of the fellows that the BC Lions count on a great deal in every football game is Jim Evenson there, fullback. Here we see him on a power run for 28 yards. As we mentioned earlier in the telecast, he lost out to George Reed. I'm sorry, in a pass reception rather than a, a run, but he shows his running ability there after catching that ball. Now we see the all Mr. Everything for the BC Lions, Jim Young, as quarterback Paul Brothers rolls out and hits Jim Young for a 20-yard touchdown pass. Well, Frank, an exciting first half. More to come in the second. The score is the Argonauts 25, the Lions 14. We'll return to the second half kickoff in just a moment. If you've ever met a CP Rail freight traffic representative, you might have the idea that he's a little on his own. Nothing could be further from the truth. He's got the help of our computer experts, industrial site specialists, train crews, economists, statisticians, Lawyers, designers, engineers, accountants, great people, and anybody else he needs. So next time you're talking to a CP Rail freight traffic rep, think of all the support he can offer you.
another way Canadian Pacific serves you. Back at Empire Stadium, we're just about set to start the second half of what has thus far proven to be a tremendously exciting football game with the Argonauts leading by a score of 25 to 14. I'm Don Whitman. With me is Frank Rigney and Don Chevrier. Our spotter, Mo Simovich. And we anticipate a rather exciting second half as well. Giuseppe Simone is uh, compiling all the facts and figures of tonight's ball game, and he's been kept busy with the pen and pencil thus far. Some impressive statistics have been posted by both teams. The Toronto Argonauts will kick off to the Lions. 27, Leroy Sledge. 21, Jake Scott will be on the receiving end of this kickoff. The Argonauts have, of course, won two and lost one. They defeated Montreal and Winnipeg, losing to Hamilton, while the British Columbia Lions have yet to win a ball game. They lost their season opener here at home to the Calgary Stampeders. Then they were beaten by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They went east and lost to the Ottawa Rough Riders and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The second half is underway. Leroy Sledge takes the kick out. He's a powerful runner, and he was forced out on the far side of the field by the kicker, Dave Mann, at the 48-yard line. A 50-yard boot and a 35-yard return by number 27, Leroy Sledge. Don, you certainly have to say that the kickoff returns has to be one of the big offensive plays for the BC Lions tonight after two great returns by Jake Scott Leroy Sledge comes back and does the same thing from the 48 it's first and 10 for the BC Lions Paul Brothers is the quarterback he has Sledge and Evenson in behind him flanked are Jake Scott and Jim Young intercepted it could be a touchdown it is for Alan Ray Aldrich Mike Bloom was applying pressure, so was Pete Martin, and Brothers, in a moment of desperation, I think attempted to throw the screen. Because, of course, this pressure, Don, is what caused this play, and Aldridge makes a fine reception, reaches out with his one hand, gathers it in, and nobody has a chance as he scores six points. Frank, would you say that Alan Ray Aldridge read screen on that and uh, dropped back with Jim Evenson? I think he did, uh, Don. You can never be sure of that, but he certainly, if he didn't, he recovered very quickly and got out there to cover Jim Evenson. So it's now 31-14 early in this second half. Dave Mann will attempt to add the 32nd Toronto point. He does. This is really discouraging for the BC Lion Football Club. They've had two passes intercepted and run back for touchdowns. That one by Alan Ray Aldridge and the first one by Dick Thornton run back 45 yards. By the way, the fans across Canada might be interested in knowing that Dick Thornton is going to be off in the Orient over the winter this year publicizing Expo 1970. Well, the British Columbia Lions will again get an opportunity to demonstrate their kickoff return prowess. Dave Mann will boot for the Argonauts, and Leroy Sledge and Jake Scott are deep. This one is a little shorter. It's taken by Lassiter. He is dropped at the 29. Jim Henderson was the first man to make contact. 48-yard kickoff, a 12-yard return. Apparently, the official word is that Jim Thorpe was thrown out of the ball game for kicking a BC Lion player in that mix-up by the bench just to the end of the first uh, half. Jim Evenson was the ball carrier, tackled by Vernon Vinoy. 
He's number 65. He's a big fella. He stands 6'8 and weighs 280 pounds, and he comes from Kansas. And with Jim Thorpe going to the bench, Bob Morgan comes in. Morgan apparently was the designated import for the Argonauts tonight. A gain of about three, it would be second and seven for the BC Lions. Jake Scott comes to the left. Hendrickson is the split end right. The pass is knocked down by Vinoy. Standing 6'8", and uh, with about another three-foot reach, Paul Brothers had to get that ball a long way up there to prevent this big fella, number 65, from batting it away. Don, he was the number two draft choice of the NFL's New York Giants, and the big complaint against him so far is, and he's only a rookie, he's not quite mean enough. That comes with pro experience. So it's third down for the BC Lions. And the kick by Mr. Phillips is taken by Mike Even back at the 32. He's forced out at that BC bench by Max Hubert. Don, I don't know, uh, referring to Benoit again, this six foot eight, 280 pound defensive end. Uh, he may not be mean enough, but certainly as a, a former offensive tackle, I wouldn't even want him lining up across from me. <laughs> 32-14 is the advantage the Argonauts enjoy over the Lions. From the 43, it's first and 10. Simon's the ball carrier. He has scales blocking for him. And he's down to the 50 for a 15-yard romp and a first down. Craig Murray came in to make the tackle. Bill Simon's uh, off to something of a slow start this year. He's carried the ball 41 times for 165 yards and a four-yard rushing average. Don? That's his longest gain right now of the year 15. He's had trouble breaking the long one, but he's had some new offensive blockers in that line, and that may account for it. First and 10 from the 50 of the BC Lions. Ramey this time. He has great moves. He's like a ghost coming through there. At least that was the description that Jim Tomlin and uh, Dick Thornton gave to him. This is why they call him the knife. Again, watch Roger Scales, number 51, and Charlie Bray, number 57, as they lead, they lead uh, Ramey on this sweep. He knocked down number 12, Jerry Bradley, and Dave beats him the rest of the way and goes for a 23-yard gain. There's a timeout on the field at the eight minute mark of the third quarter. The score is the Argonauts 32, the BC Lions 14. When it comes to looking after the pies that mother makes, Joe Mooney is a real fuss budget. He cares so much about mother's pies that he looks after each one himself. And when he has to send a shipment to a customer, he makes sure nothing can go wrong. He uses CP Ships containers, of course. He knows there's no better way to ship Mother's Pies because the cargo stays in the container and the container stays unopened. The only thing that gets handled is the container itself. So when it gets to his customer, it will be just the way Joe packed it. And Joe, he's so relaxed he can take Mother Mooney off on a White Empress vacation cruise. For a fuss budget like Joe, that says a lot about our containers. CP Ships, another way Canadian Pacific serves you. With that fine gallop by Dave Ramey, and with 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter, the Argonauts have a first down at 27 BC Lions. Simons may throw. Short of Bobby Taylor, the intended receiver. It will be second and 10 from the 27. Frank, I don't know what it is, but every time Simons goes wide at a sweep, he makes that motion as though he's going to throw. That time he did, but he makes the fake other times too. 
Yes, I think he's working on his timing. As you mentioned earlier, Don, uh, he's got some new people in that offensive line. And just by making that move, it gives him a little more time to get behind his blockers and use them. Second and ten. Good catch. At the five-yard line, Bill Simons grabbed that one in front of three defenders. And it's a 24-yard gain. When things go well, they certainly go well. I think that was almost a broken play as Bill Simons and Paul Marco are in the same area. He gets the ball to uh, his receiver, Simons, and he's down to the two-yard line. First and touchdown for the Toronto Argonauts. They have been a potent scoring machine in this game. They've had two defensive touchdowns, one by Thornton, the other by Aldridge. Both on pass interceptions. Simons gets the touchdown. He goes in there behind, uh, again, Charlie Bray and Big Bob Swift, number 53, a former BC Lion, a former fullback, and a former offensive guard, now playing center for the Toronto Argonauts. Doing a most creditable job at that center position for the Argonauts. Dave Mann will try for point number 39. All the fireworks have not taken place at the Pacific National Exhibition. The Toronto Argonauts have provided a few of their own. Much to the dismay of a capacity crowd at Empire Stadium, it's now 39 to 14. Don, the fans in Vancouver have been down on the Lions, and we explained the tough schedule they had to start this season with. And it's perhaps a little unfair, but fans will be fans. Denny Beach got chewed out. He's the Lions GM. After the first game in Calgary, his team lost. It was against Calgary here. And he suggested the fan complaining might have been in the past. The guy waved his season's ticket to him. Denny nodded his head. He said, whatever you say, I agree with. The customer always has to be right. Leroy Sledge, Jake Scott. The kickoff return combination for the British Columbia Lions with Dave Mann, number 16, getting the signal from referee I, Al Dryborough. Lassiter takes the kickoff and almost immediately steps into touch at the 20-yard line. And the fans don't exactly approve of that maneuver. A 47-yard kickoff and a two-yard return. It seems to be an unfortunate comment of mine while ago that the BC Lions' best offensive play was a kickoff return because I'm sure for the BC Lions coaching staff, they've used it far too often this evening. 11 minutes and 9 seconds still remain to be played in the third quarter. Evenson is met almost at the line of scrimmage by Alan Ray Aldridge. Defensively, the Toronto Argonauts of Vinoy, Wadsworth, and Harrington as their front three. Jim Evenson, number 28, the ball carrier. Mike Bloom, Dick Aldridge, Alan Ray Aldridge, and Pete Martin are the linebackers. Dick Thornton, Ed Learn, Marv Luster, Ron Aranz, and Jim Tomlin are the defensive backs. Both Alan Ray Aldridge and Dick Thornton have a touchdown as the result of pass interceptions tonight. Over the head of Jake Scott, he was being defended by Thornton and Ed Learn. It appears that the BC Lions quarterback, Paul Brothers, is somewhat confused, really, by the Toronto defense. As we mentioned several times before, Toronto has so many different sets that they can confuse a quarterback as to what he should be calling. And of course, Brothers isn't that experienced to pick it apart. And it's showing at this point in the ball game. Jerry Sternberg and Mike Even, the punt return pair for the Toronto Argonauts. Ken Phillips is the left-footed kicker for the BC Lions, and he's been getting good distance. Even squirmed but found no room to run, and he was stopped almost on the spot at the 37. A 53-yard kick, just a three-yard return. 
Don, the Lions are two quarterbacks at Paul Brothers and Pete Oler. On Monday, they had a third for a while. Merlin Briscoe from the Denver Broncos came in, asked permission to see his ailing mother in Nebraska, and they next heard of him in Buffalo, where he'd signed with the Buffalo Bills. Next time a Lion asks for leave, they'll think twice. Would you say he shuffled off to Buffalo? Incomplete intended for Bobby Taylor. Dave Ray was applying pressure. The uh, Toronto Argonauts also have an excellent backup quarterback, Don, in the uh, person of Frank Constantino. The fans might be interested to know. Dick Thornton will have a touchdown as the result of pass interceptions tonight. Over the head of Jake Scott, he was being defended by Thornton and Ed Learn. It appears that the BC Lions quarterback, Paul Brothers, is somewhat confused, really, by the Toronto defense. As we mentioned several times before, Toronto has so many different sets that they can confuse a quarterback as to what he should be calling. And of course, Brothers isn't that experienced to pick it apart, and it's showing at this point in the ball game. Jerry Sternberg and Mike Even, the punt return there for the Toronto Argonauts. Ken Phillips is the left-footed kicker for the BC Lions, and he's been getting good distance. Even squirmed but found no room to run, and he was stopped almost on the spot at the 37. A 53-yard kick, just a three-yard return. Don, the Lions are two quarterbacks at Paul Brothers and Pete Oler. On Monday, they had a third for a while. Merlin Briscoe from the Denver Broncos came in, asked permission to see his ailing mother in Nebraska, and they next heard of him in Buffalo, where he'd signed with the Buffalo Bills. Next time a Lion asks for leave, they'll think twice. Would you say he shuffled off to Buffalo? Incomplete intended for Bobby Taylor. Dave Ray was applying pressure. The uh, Toronto Argonauts also have an excellent backup quarterback, Don, in the uh, person of Frank Constantino. The fans might be interested to know that Frank is uh, authoring a thesis on the Canadian Football League, which will be published this October. Limping to the bench for the Toronto Argonauts is Chuck Liebrock. His spot has been taken at the guard position by Charlie Bray, number 57. Second and 10. Swing pass to Ramey. He couldn't hang on. Ted Girella was running over with Ramey, and Ramey bobbled that ball momentarily, as you saw. Just wondering if Dave saw the highlights of Ted Girella hitting uh, Christian, the offensive back of the <laughs> Hamilton Tiger Cats. Lassiter and Easley. Preparing to receive this Dave Mann punt. Easley takes it. Almost went all the way. Only Mel Crawford, who hauled the feet out from under him, prevented what could have been a spectacular punt return. Watch number 64, Garrett Huntsberger, as he pulls up the tight end Mel Prophet, number 75. Prophet finally gets down to make the stop, but a tremendous return, 26 yards. Now Pete Oler has gone into the ball game to replace Paul Brothers as quarterback of the British Columbia Lions. The home run toss aimed at Jim Young, intercepted by Marvin Luster, tackled by Jim Young way down at the 13-yard line. 
So the bard of the boondocks, as he has been nicknamed, tries a pass on the first play unsuccessfully. I'm afraid that he came in there with uh, just having in mind to throw deep, Don. And when you have people like Marvin Lester and Ed Lernbacker, 1968 All-Canadian defensive backs, you just can't get away from that or get away with that. And Marv Lester shows you what happens when you try to. A fine interception. Because of his proclivity to poetry writing, Denny Boyd of the Vancouver Sun uh, nicknamed Pete Older the Bard of the Boondocks. We may have a few poems to write about that particular play, but in the meantime, it's Bill Simons, the ball carrier, stopped by Dave Toby. It's a gain of five, it will be second and five. Eight minutes and one second still to play in quarter number three. 39-14 is the score. The Toronto Argonauts lead the British Columbia Lions. Pass to Bobby Taylor. Taylor almost immediately stepped into touch. He was given a little shove by Craig Murray. That shot of Bobby Taylor, the hair down behind the helmet there, reminds us that Phyllis Diller is appearing at the cave here in Vancouver, Don. Have you caught her act yet? No, not yet. Don, I think making comments about Bobby Taylor like that, you're much safer up here in the booth announcing the ball game than you are on the opposing team. He's quite a tough little boy. The Argonauts are somewhat concerned as uh, they await the result of this measurement, which does give them a first down. About the future of Bobby Taylor, there is a possibility that he may give up his football career to move into professional hockey. And uh, if he does so with Philadelphia of the National Hockey League, well, that, of course, would mean he would go to training camp within a couple of weeks. Ramey attempted to pick his way through that defensive line of the British Columbia Lions. He was unsuccessful on this particular occasion. We'll see Paul Marco here, number 76, attempt to make a, a block for Dave Ramey to spring him loose. We see Wayne Dennis, number 52, do an excellent job defensively as he stops Dave for only a two-yard gain. Second and eight from the 27. Pass to Bobby Taylor. Again, he's forced into touch by Ted Zarella. It again is rather close to a first down. And speaking to the Toronto coaches about the receivers, uh, they felt that Mel Prophet gave them excellent sharp receiving. Jim Thorpe gave them the deep threat that they needed. Uh, Somewhat like Vic Washington of the Ottawa Rough Riders, and little Bobby Taylor, who just received that one, can do it all. The short ones, the long ones, or anywhere in between. It's about a yard short of the first down, and the fans, of course, respond. However, with the crown in the field and the referees having to look from one side to the other, it does pose quite a problem, and they should not at all be faulted for calling for the measurement. Well, this year, of course, Don, they indicate which team asked for the measurement. In this case, it was the Argonauts, and so they got a little extra rise from the crowd. So looking at third and one, the Toronto Argonauts, with that comfortable 25-point advantage, are taking no chances as Dave Mann goes back to do the punting. Dave Easley grabbed it and uh, almost immediately Marco and Prophet were down to make the tackle. But the official on the spot flipped the flag and it will probably be a no yards call against the Toronto Argonauts. A 39 yard kick, a two yard return. I believe it was a call against Mel Prophet number 75. He was a little bit 
overly enthusiastic, and the ball came back a bit his way, and I think he was about three yards from the receiver, which, of course, causes a no-yard penalty. From the 49, it's first and 10 for the BC Lions, and Paul Brothers is back at quarterback. And this one is intercepted by Ed Learn. Caught and dropped by Ted Workington. I don't think we need to tell you if you have the volume on your television set turned up that the fans at Empire Stadium are not pleased with the performance they're watching tonight. First, Pete Oler throws an interception to Marvin Luster, and now Paul Brothers flips one into the arms of Ed Learn. That's the fourth interception by the Toronto Argonauts tonight. From the 52, it's first and 10 Toronto. Dave Ramey, the ball carrier. He stumbled out about the 42 and drove down to the 38. Dave Easley made the tackle. Again, Charlie Bray, number 57, the right guard, and the veteran Danny Nicolak, number 60, open a big hole for Dave, and of course he knows what to do with it once he gets in that secondary. So from the 38, it's first and 10 for the Toronto Argonauts. Oh, Bill Simons knows what to do with it. All the way to the 12 yard strike with Dave Easley making the tackle. I'm sure Jim Hyten is, is feeling right now that it's so close yet so far away. He almost had Simons at the line of scrimmage, but he misses him. And Simons rolls up the middle for a 26 yard gain before he stopped by Easley. Toronto from the 12 yard strike, first and 10. Ramey is down to the eight yard line. The coach of the Toronto Argonauts uh, rather relaxed. Uh, I don't know whether he is lighting that particular cigar or is he just going to hold it in his hand for a more opportune moment when he feels the ball game is secure and then light the stogie. He should feel secure, Don, at this point because the Toronto Argonauts are really taking it to the BC Lions, as they say. They're doing nothing fancy, just handing it to a back and going with basic line blocking. A gain of four, it's second and six from the nine. Through the end zone, although Mel Prophet was the intended receiver, number 75. So now it's third and six, and the question is, what will the Toronto Argonauts do? Will the move come from the bench with Dave Mann going for three, or will they gamble and try for six? And apparently the decision has been made. Tom Wilkinson will go for six points, or at least the first down. It's third and six from the nine. Well, if you were quarterbacking, what play would you call? Penalty marker is thrown. And clap for the loss. Jim Heighton gets through to Wilkinson, but a penalty marker is down. Offside was the charge against the Argonauts. Thus, the penalty is declined by the BC Lions, and they snuff out that potential rally. We see Garrett Huntsberger Don, doing an excellent job defensively, and he's finally the one that puts the final touches on Tom Wilkinson, the Argo quarterback. There's a timeout in the field at the 12-minute mark of the third quarter. The score is the Argos 39, the BC Lions 14.
When you go to your butcher, you expect fresh meat. Meat at the peak of its flavor. And keeping meat fresh means constant refrigeration. You know it. Your butcher knows it. And we know it. So at CP Rail, we developed controlled temperature cars for fresh shipment of meats and other perishables. It's another way our specialized freight equipment works for you. CP Rail, another way Canadian Pacific serves you. Well, if you're wondering about some of the statistics of this ball game, the Toronto Argonauts have been averaging about 117 yards per quarter. They have a total output offensively of 350 yards, 17 first downs to six first downs and 123 yards for the BC Lions. The Lions have a first down from the 15. Leroy Sledge carrying the football. Good run back by Sledge up to the 33-yard line, tackled there by Dick Thornton. One of the few bright lights uh, in the BC, uh, from the BC's point of view, Leroy Sledge this evening. He goes for a 20-yard gain with Big Ken Sugarman, number 68, and Trevor Ekdahl, number 66, leading him, leading him on that sweep around the right side. Jake Scott, number 21, comes out to the left. First and 10 for the BC Lions. Swing pass to Leroy Sledge. He's a tough man to bring down. Tackled by Dick Thornton on the far side of the field. That's another first down. You know, Don, perhaps it's a good thing that Ramey wears 14, not 27. You've got 27 Sledge in Vancouver, 27 Washington and Ottawa, another 27 in Ramey. You'd have defensive players as coach cases all over the league. <laughs> Jim Evenson tackled by Alan Ray Aldridge. We asked Dick Thornton earlier today, uh, Don, what he attributed the Toronto cohesiveness to is they have a, a lot of cast offs from other ball clubs. And his comment was that uh, Coach Leo Kehill just seemed to be able to mold a ball club, treat them all like men, and be concerned mainly with their performance on the field. Second and nine from the 46 for the BC Lions. The pass complete to Jake Scott. He has a first down. There's a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Dick Thornton made the tackle. We'll wait for referee Al Dryborough to give us a signal. First down signals the referee. No indication as to what the flag was thrown for or whether it was dropped inadvertently. The pass complete to Jim Young. He is forced out in front of the BC bench by Jim Tomlin. BC is trying to steal some of uh, the Argonaut offensive theory now and sending people in motion having four or five quick receivers on one side of the field. They've had success, but it's been limited success on this drive. Second and a couple from the 44-yard line. Jim Evenson crosses the 40 into the 39 for the first down. The official attendance has just been announced tonight, 27,671. So it's first and 10 for the BC Lions. Paul Brothers number 10, the quarterback. He has had three of his passes picked off. Two of them have been returned for touchdowns. Pete Oler, in for just one play, had his only pass attempt intercepted.
Ed Harrington came from behind to make the initial contact with Paul Brothers, and then he received assistance in finally tackling the D.C. quarterback, but not before he had again advanced the yardstick. This is what happens when you don't contain a quarterback. Then all the receivers from the B.C. Lions going deep, the Argonauts playing a man-to-man -man defense. Paul Brothers had quite a bit of room and gained 16 yards. This could be the final play of the third quarter with three seconds remaining on the clock. Complete to Jim Young, who grabbed it in front of Ed Learn, and then Dick Thornton came over to assist in the tackle. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is the Argonauts 39, the BC Lions 14. And we'll have more CFL action after this message. Heart disease is a family problem, and the control of this leading health enemy is a family affair. Yes, there are steps that every one of you can take to reduce the risk of heart attack. Regular exercise, for example. It improves the circulation and strengthens the heart. And weight control. Extra pounds increase the risk of high blood pressure and heart attack. Another way to reduce your family's risk is to eat a good, balanced diet, low in cholesterol and saturated fats. Control of high blood pressure reduces the risk of both heart attack and stroke. And remember, too, Heavy cigarette smokers have heart attacks at a rate two to three times higher than non-smokers. Yes, there are steps every member of the family can take to reduce the risk of heart attack. And the first step is to your doctor's office to see him regularly. For more information on reducing the risk of heart attack, ask your heart association. Don Whitman along with Frank Rigney, Don Chevrier, Mo Simovich, Giuseppe Simone for the fourth quarter of this Toronto Argonaut British Columbia Lion football game with the Argonauts leading 39 to 14. Earlier Frank Rigney commented about the number of characters on this Toronto Argonaut roster and uh, the coach of the Toronto Argonauts Leo Cahill simply said there would be no policing off the field. But don't do anything to bring shame to the Argos and get our team into the Grey Cup. Lynn Hendrickson moves the football to the five yard line and from there it will be first and touchdown for the BC Lions. Hendrickson number 71. This year Hendrickson has caught 16 passes for two touchdowns and he's number three on the pass receiving list in the West. Sledge hammers his way to about the two, tackled by Alan Ray Aldrich. Number 70, Mike Bloom just getting to his feet, and number 64, Paul Balasuk coming into the picture. He's replacing number 31, Dick Aldridge, at a linebacking spot. Second and touchdown from about the three. Sledge struggling. He's in there. Twenty-seven thousand fans have not had too much to cheer about tonight, but the BC Lions add their twentieth points with Leroy Sledge into the end zone for the major score. Commented several times on that exact play, Don, about the blocking of Mike St. Louis, number 67, and Trevor Ekdahl, number 66. But I think the big factor in that play was Leroy Sledge's determination to get into that end zone, and he certainly did it. It was quite an effort. Girella misses on his extra point attempt. So the score remains the Toronto Argonauts 39 and the British Columbia Lions 20. Don, you see how tall those goalposts are as uh, the camera just leaves them now. They were increased in height for the benefit of Ted Girella. The Lions thought the officials weren't really uh, giving him his due because sometimes he would kick so high they couldn't judge if it was true or not. Well, that time, they'd have to widen the post for Ted to get the convert. <laughs> in the pregame warm-up, we might also point out that Ted Girella was attempting field goals from 65 yards out. 
I believe the coach of the BC Lions Jim Champion was quoted earlier this year as commenting that sometime or other he would give Girella an opportunity to try one from that far and if there is a wind to the advantage of Ted Girella I'm sure that sometime in the season you might see an exceptionally long field goal try his kickoff goes to Ramey who fumbles it in the end zone Frank, I think most fans across the country will agree that Dave Ramey is having a rather impressive debut as a Toronto Argonaut. He certainly is. Wally Giebler is going to have to play tremendously for Winnipeg for this trade to look good from their point of view. Dave takes off up the middle, and if he could have just gotten one more step on Jarella, I'm sure that he's gone all the way. A 67-yard kickoff and a 48-yard return. Toronto first and 10, the ball at the Argonaut 46. Good catch by Mike Even, who cut right in front of Toby and Ray and made the grab for a seven yard gain that very nearly was intercepted. You just have to have a tremendous amount of respect for Wilkinson on that play. He rolled out to the right and he actually threw backward the toughest thing that uh, he can do. He didn't have a chance to stop. He just threw across his body and did a fine job of it. A round of applause for Dave Ramey. Who comes to the Toronto Argonaut bench and is being replaced by Bob Morgan. Sideline pass to Bobby Taylor. He is caught by Jerry Bradley. And the official marks it as just short of the 50 of the British Columbia Lions, but a first down for the Toronto Argonauts. Don, you were talking a while ago about Jurella, and uh, there's a story here in Vancouver that at practice one night, Jimmy Young told Ted Jarella 30 yard field goals are easy he tried one and made it Ted said fine let's turn around and see how you do <laughs> Ted put it through and Jim missed here's the bomb intended for even incomplete good pressure again by Garrett Hutzberger uh, number 64. He seems to be the only BC Lion that's able to put any pressure at all on quarterback uh, Wilkinson of the Argonauts. Again, Dave Ramey goes in and Bob Morgan comes out. It's second and 10. The ball just short of the 50 of the British Columbia Lions. Simons driving through. He's got a hole and he's down to the 35 yard line. And undoubtedly, the running of Bill Simons will be aided by the presence of Dave Ramey. We have a stoppage in play at the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter. The score is the Argos 39, the BC Lions 20. Major League Baseball has come to Canada. It's the Expos playing out of Montreal's Jarry Park. CBC Television covers the Expos, Canada's first Major League Baseball team. It's a hit that puts a runner on first, and Hal Kelly calls the exciting play-by-play -play with Jim Hearn providing the color commentary. It's a walk that puts another runner on first and moves Expos first man to second, and then... There's the left fielder, Mac Jones. See the Montreal Expos in action Wednesdays on CBC Television. That 15-yard gallop by Bill Simons puts the Argonauts at the BC 35-yard line. They have it first and ten. Huntsberger, Heighton, Wayne Dennis, and Bob Brown, the front four, preparing to thwart this charge by the Toronto Argonauts, directed by 19, Tom Wilkinson. Pass to Bobby Taylor. He's caught by Craig Murray, but it's another first down at the 15-yard line. 
Craig Murray, of course, is back in the lineup of the British Columbia Lions after suffering a serious face and eye injury in the second game of the season out in Regina. That was a 20 yard gain by number 24, Bobby Taylor. A great pattern there, Don. Both Taylor and Mel Prop, the tight end, they scissors or crossed their paths, and both of them were open. First and 10, Toronto from the 15 yard line. Morgan is in in place of Ramey, and he gets the ball. Wayne Dennis, number 52, made the tackle. It's a gain of two. It will be second and eight. Well, Leo Cahill uh, having a little difficulty with uh, that cigar. He's had it lit, but he's had difficulty keeping it going. Don Wilkinson put that ball well over the head of Mel Proppet. I think he may have realized he was in a little bit of difficulty. There seemed to be some mix up on that play, uh, Don. There were several receivers in the same area. Mike Even, who normally uh, is not in the starting offensive lineup, uh, seemed to be somewhat confused and right next to Bobby Taylor uh, in the BC line defensive secondary. So now the Toronto Argonauts will try for three points. Cosentino will hold the ball at the 20 yard line. Dave Mann kicking from directly in front of the post. He is successful. So add three more to the Toronto Argonaut total. They now lead 42-20. Reminder again, the Canada Games on CBC television tomorrow, and that's with the closing ceremonies from Halifax. And on Wednesday, our cameras follow the Argonauts to Edmonton for the second game of their Western swing against the Edmonton Eskimos. That game at 8 o'clock Edmonton time on Wednesday night from Clark Stadium. And then, of course, baseball on the CBC television network on Saturday, the baseball game of the week. Sports action of plenty on the CBC television network. Draw play. Evenson is the ball carrier, striking to the 43. Marv Luster was in on the tackle. Evenson last year, the second leading rusher in the West. Leroy Sledge crossed the 45 yard line and had his feet yanked up from under him. Not almost a forgotten man on the Argonaut quarterbacking ranks is Frank Cosentino, what with Gabler and Wilkinson to contend with. Uh, now the Gabler's gone. Of course, Frank's the number one backup man, and he's warming up, may make an appearance later. But at the moment, the British Columbia Lions have the floor. be some mix up on that play uh, Don there were several receivers in the same area Mike Eben who normally uh, is not in the starting offensive lineup uh, seemed to be somewhat confused and right next to Bobby Taylor uh, in the BC line defensive secondary. So now the Toronto Argonauts will try for three points. Cosentino will hold the ball at the 20 yard line. Dave Mann kicking from directly in front of the post. He is successful. So add three more to the Toronto Argonaut total. They now lead 42-20. Reminder again, the Canada Games on CBC television tomorrow, and that's with the closing ceremonies from Halifax. And on Wednesday, our cameras follow the Argonauts to Edmonton for the second game of their Western swing against the Edmonton Eskimos. That game at 8 o'clock Edmonton time on Wednesday night from Clark Stadium. 
And then, of course, baseball on the CBC Television Network on Saturday, the baseball game of the week. Sports action of plenty on the CBC Television Network. A draw play. Evenson is the ball carrier, striking to the 43. Marv Luster was in on the tackle. Evenson last year, the second leading rusher in the West. Leroy Sledge crossed the 45 yard line and had his feet yanked up from under him. Not almost a forgotten man in the Argonaut quarterbacking ranks as Frank Cosentino, what with Gabler and Wilkinson to contend with. And uh, now the Gabler's gone. Of course, Frank's the number one backup man, and he's warming up, may make an appearance later. But at the moment, the British Columbia Lions have the football under the direction of quarterback Paul Brothers. It's first and ten from the 47. Pass is complete to Leroy Sledge. Dick Thornton came up to make the tackle. Number 25, Tricky Dicky, as he's nicknamed by his teammates. Of course, Dick being the old pro that he is, he's going to give away those short receptions at this point. With a 22-point lead and eight minutes left to go, Dick knows what he's doing. He gives a, an eight-yard reception to Leroy Sledge. It's second and about one and a half for the British Columbia Lions from the 54 of the Toronto Argonauts. And this is first down territory for Jim Evenson. Vernon Vinoy and Dick Aldridge both came up to haul down the BC ball carrier. It's first and ten for the Lions. The ball at the 51 of the Toronto Argonauts. Jake Scott goes wide to the left. Long throw to Scott. Tomlin was defending on him. And some mix up there. Brothers either flipped it the wrong way or Scott turned the wrong way, Frank. I think that ball got away from him a bit, Don. Uh, as the golfers across the country will uh, attest to you, he simply didn't stay down with that one, <laughs> and uh, it flew right over the receiver's head. Second and ten from the 51. Incomplete intended for Lefty Hendrickson. And it will be third and ten. Jim Tomlin was defending against Hendrickson. Tomlin came to the Toronto Argonauts this year from the New Orleans Saints of the National Football League. Might be interesting for the fans to note if uh, British Columbia punt here, their punter Ken Phillips, who's a left footed kicker, number 22 and kicking for them the first time this year. He drops the ball from an awfully high position. I'm just wondering if uh, on an evening when there's high winds if he's going to have a problem. He had something of a problem with the low snap and didn't get that ball away particularly well. A penalty marker is down and no yards. Maybe the infraction is Jerry Sternberg returned it and uh, Hendrickson was in too close. As a matter of fact he almost caught the football. 34 yard kick a five yard return and we're waiting for the signal from the field and when the Argonauts do scrimmage the ball Frank Cosentino will be the quarterback number 11 replacing Tom Wilkinson number 60 conferring with the officials is Danny Nicolet. He's been around for a long time Don Chevrier. Yes, he has 14 years, as Frank Rigney said earlier. And uh, for Danny, it's been a long wait to have a solid contending team to play for. But he appears to have one here in 1916. Don, I think you were talking to Coach Leo Cahill about Frank Constantino last night. Yes, we were talking about Constantino. We were talking about 
Tom Wilkinson and the quarterbacking situation. And maturity is one word the coaches use most often when talking about quarterbacks. And of course, Cosentino spent time with both the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Edmonton Eskimos. And he's going to be an excellent backup man for the Toronto Argonauts, in the opinion of Coach Leo Cahill. Mike Eben was the intended receiver, number 32. Second and 10 from the 31 for the Toronto Argonauts. They lead 42 20. Six minutes and four seconds remain in the ball game. Pass complete. On the far side of the field, forced into touch is Jim Henderson, number 72. Craig Murray made the tackle, and the Toronto Argonauts advanced the football 22 yards, and Coach Leo Cahill is doing some rather free substituting in this fourth quarter. Frank Constantino moved around back there quite nimbly, Don, uh, on that one, and that's something that he certainly hasn't been noted for in the past. You notice that strong arm, which he showed you on the, the previous play to that one, which was incomplete. From the 53, it's first and 10. Over the head of Bobby Taylor. Lance Sparks was defending on Taylor and deflected that ball. It will be second and 10 for the Argonauts from the 53. Might be interesting for the fans to try to pick out when BC is in a zone defense and when they're in a man to man. When you see Toronto in uh, offensive backs go in motion. If nobody moves on the BC defensive team, they're in a zone defense. Morgan, the receiver, cut down almost immediately by Dave Toby, and it was Toby who was in on quarterback Frank Cosentino. He's number 51 just now getting to his feet. He made an excellent recovery after putting the rush on quarterback Cosentino to come over and cover Morgan. A loss of eight, it will be third and 18 for the Argonauts. Dave Mann stands back on the 32 to do the kicking. Fielded by Lassiter. And he stopped at the 24 yard line. Alan Ray Aldridge is down to make the tackle. A 40 yard kick and a one yard return. Don, you mentioned the changes the Argonauts are making, and this likely is because of that game coming up just uh, three nights from now at Clark Stadium in Edmonton on Wednesday against the Eskimos. And Henry Grenda, the young Canadian, is now in at quarterback for the BC Lions. Pete Martin made the tackle. Renda moving out of there and uh, lugging that football to the 30 yard line. A number of people have uh, mentioned in Vancouver the similar physical appearance of Grenda to the former great Joe Cap, who was the quarterback here for so many years. Uh, certainly, if it carries through to his ability, the BC fans will be pleased. Grenda is 6'3 and weighs 215 pounds. He played his college ball at Washington State. Leroy Sledge, the ball carrier. The Lions, by the way, have just 
replaced Cap back on their negotiation list. He has a leg injury in Minnesota. It's doubtful they'd wave him right through the NFL, but the other day they put Cap's name on the BC negotiation list. It's short of the first down by one. With 303 to play in quarter number four. And with the Argonauts leading 42-20, Jim Champion apparently feels he's nothing to lose by gambling. And again, the Lions are successful. We have a stoppage in play at the 12-minute mark of the fourth quarter. The score is the Argos 42, the BC Lions 20. The brute strength and the endurance of running a mile in under four minutes. The drive that knifes the air. An odyssey found in wind and sail. The crunch and intellect that makes winners. Horses and hooves, winning speeds, last second charges, winners, losers, excitement. Championship competition. All the sports, all the champions. What television is all about on CBC. See Canada Games action and the closing ceremonies tomorrow on CBC Television. Leo Cahill, the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, enjoying this game. His opposite number is not. Intercepted. Sternberg picks it off, and he's tackled by Jake Scott down at the 38-yard line. Number 34, Jerry Sternberg, who came to the Argonauts from the Montreal Alouettes, makes that interception for the Argonauts, and I think that's number five in this ball game. You, you can't give the ball away that many times, obviously, Don. Uh, I don't know if you could call that an Argo bounce, as seeing the ball didn't hit the ground, but they've certainly got the breaks tonight, although well-deserved on their play. Cosentino, the quarterback. Long throw to Bobby Taylor, intercepted by the BC Lions. In the end zone, coming up with that football is Craig Murray, and now we have another shoving duel going on in the end zone as we take another look at this play. Here we see Constantino throwing that ball 50 yards in the air, but uh, Jarella makes the interception on uh, the attempt to Bobby Taylor. Of course, Taylor's not one to be pushed around. There was a bit of, uh, of a conversation between them down there. And so the ball changes hands quickly with 2.06 remaining. And the British Columbia Lions will scrimmage from the 10. On Wednesday night, of course, the Edmonton Eskimos have the task of attempting to stop this Toronto Argonaut machine. The CBC Television Network will be in attendance for coverage of that game. Jim Evenson is up to the 14-yard line where Marvin Luster came up to make the tackle. Evenson, 28, 55 is Max Huber, 71 is Hendrickson, and 11 is the quarterback, Hank Grenda. Crowd of 27,671 at Empire Stadium heading for the exits. Some of them probably heading out to partake of the entertainment provided right next door by the Pacific National Exhibition. The pass attempt incomplete. Scott was the intended receiver. So it's third and a kicking situation for the BC Lions. Ken Phillips will be kicking the ball from about the goal line.
The Lions heading for their fifth consecutive defeat in the Canadian Football League. They occupy the cellar in the west. And the Toronto Argonauts a minute and 19 seconds away from win number three. They have one loss. Mike Even is dropped at the 50-yard line, and the Argonauts will get an opportunity to add further to their point total. Dave Galinsky made the tackle for the Lions. First time the Argonauts had the football tonight. They gave an indication, perhaps, of what was to come as they drove for a touchdown with Wilkinson from the 14, running it over on a keeper play. Cosentino throws, and oh, how about that one? Bobby Taylor missed it. It was over his head. It bounced off the shoulder of Bradley, and as you saw, Taylor almost recaptured the football. 51 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. 42-20 is the score. Constantino certainly seems determined uh, to throw that ball deep, and he almost got away with it that time, as you mentioned, Don. Bob Taylor almost came up with that football. Second and 10 from the 50. Even goes to the right. Taylor comes to the left. Sparks had a great opportunity for an interception. He's talking to himself out there. It was in his hands and out again. So with 46 seconds left, Toronto Argonauts will give up the football on a third down punt. Lassiter and Easley go back to receive it. As our spotter, Mo Simovich, has pointed out, on all punts by the Toronto Argonaut Football Club, Alan Ray Aldridge, number 44, comes in to replace Bob Swift to uh, center that football. He's been doing an excellent job this evening, as has Dave Mann, the punter. Lassiter flips it out to Easley. The last waltz, I guess you could call that one, as Hudspeth hung on for dear life to the jersey of Easley and swung him into touch. Hudspeth, number 66, stands 6'4 and weighs 240 pounds. He adds some beef to that offensive line of the Toronto Argonauts. He came to the team from Southern Illinois. 27 seconds remain to play. Grenda still the quarterback for the BC Lions. Pass to Jake Scott. He's tackled at the 30, but that's a first down. Again, the Toronto Argonauts defense quite willing to give away those hook patterns. Uh, a 15-yard gain as Jake Scott comes down, curls in, and he's hit with that pass from uh, quarterback Pete Oler. I'm sorry, uh, Bruce Brothers. Brenda is brought back at the 22-yard line. Three seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 64 is Garrett Huntsberger. Early in the game, he uh, was a solid part of that BC defense. 64 for the Toronto Argonauts. Alisuk has gone into the ball game in this second half and played a strong defensive game. A long throw by Grenda. The youngsters are out on the playing field. And the gun sounds to end the ball game. The game is over and the final score is the Argos 42, the BC Lions 20. We'll be back in a moment with our summary and statistics. I'm Tom McKee. When you want to enjoy the best in Canadian professional football, Join the fun and excitement of the college game. Watch the quick action on the soccer field. Or mix with the crowds that follow hockey, indoor track, and wrestling. You can do it all right here on CBC Television. When you want to watch the thoroughbreds running, follow the standard breads as they pull the sulkies around the track. Feel the tension in the air over a championship putt. Or 
watch the exhausting action of competitive tennis. Here is where you'll find it on CBC television. For the best in Major League Baseball action, golf, horse racing, hockey, soccer, college, and professional football. Stay with CBC television all season long. See the closing ceremonies from the Canada Games tomorrow on CBC television. On Chevrolet back at Empire Stadium, and this gives you some idea of the power of the Argonaut offense in this game against the BC Lions tonight. The first downs 20 for Toronto, 14 for BC. Rushing a big part of the Argonaut game with Simons and Ramey combining for much of it, 223 yards. As a matter of fact, between these two, Ramey had total yardage, passing and running of 169 yards, and he left the game at the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter for Bob Morgan. Simons, 148 yards, 105 on rushes. 14 for 28 was Tom Wilkinson, the BC Lion quarterbacks. They used three at various stages, five for 17. The interceptions, five by the Argonauts, who tore the BC Lions aerial game apart with their pass interception. The putting, just about even. The penalties, likewise. But the big difference, the total offense of the Toronto Argonauts of 418 yards in this game as they manufactured 42 points and again disappoint the BC Lions fans but give great hope in the East that perhaps we'll have a big struggle between Ottawa and Toronto for the Eastern berth in the Grey Cup, Frank. Certainly if what was required is a, a great offensive halfback uh, for the Toronto Argonauts, they've certainly found one and we all knew it, uh, Dave Ramey. Uh, as Don Whitman said before the program began, everybody was looking forward to Dave having a big evening and he certainly did. Uh, there's not much more you can say about him adding him to Bill Simons puts the Toronto Argonauts as probably the finest backfield uh, anywhere although I'm sure that the Ottawa Rough Rider fans will uh, will argue with that to a degree and like you said it puts pressure on Wally Gabler over in Winnipeg it certainly does in order to uh, have the Winnipeg fans happy about it and for coach Zaleski's trade to look good Wally Gabler is certainly going to have to show up but he can do that uh, he's uh, an old pro he's proved himself in Toronto and I'm sure that he can do so in Winnipeg as well Let's look now at one of the highlights of the game, and there were so many. The Lions, even though they scored just 20 points and lost by a total of 22, had their moments as well, and young Jake Scott was a key member of that kickoff team. I think as much uh, effort and time uh, as we've given to Dave Ramey, it only is right to show uh, that the BC Lions do have an offensive player who can uh, scamper with that football himself, and one person of Jake Scott, an 87-yard kickoff return, which led to BC's first touchdown, uh, a drive that uh, amounted to 22 yards after that run back. Don Whitman, uh, for a while you had a tense, exciting game. It sort of ran away on us later on because the Argonauts made some changes. But the Lions, you know, you watch them, you get the feeling they can still be a good football team. Tense, exciting game when we lost our network uh, early in the first quarter, and then we had that brawl over in the far, Listen, we far had the side of the ball game. Hamilton, so at least what we else could go ball. wrong this year? But uh, the BC Lions uh, have had a lot of work, and uh, we made the comment earlier in the game about uh, Jim Champion's reaction to the schedule. I was talking uh, to Champion yesterday, and Denny Veach, of course, the general manager, is not particularly pleased with the schedule the BC Lions have drawn this year. And uh, in making a comment, Champion said, if Denny Veach voted for it, it had to be unanimous at the drafting schedule of the CFL. Well, perhaps better luck next year for the Lions when the 1970 schedule comes out for that. But all is not lost Conference. yet. No. And so the Argonauts come out and gain their first win in the Western Conference, the two games they'll play. The final score was the Argonauts 42 and the British Columbia Lions 20. The CBC's next CFL telecast, Wednesday night, August 27th, when the Evans and Eskimos play host to the Argonauts. And that's the Eskimos and the Argos from Clark Stadium, Wednesday night, coast to coast on the CBC. Now, on behalf of our sponsors and the CBC Television Network, Don Chevrier bidding you all a very pleasant good night. Canadian professional football. This portion brought to you by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for the best in television sports coverage across Canada every season.
This has been a CBC TV sports presentation. This is the CBC Television Network.